That's quite a hard act to follow, I think, isn't it? I'm not going to blow anything up or anything. Um, and actually, what I want to talk about is, I suppose, quite different to everything that we've talked about so far. Um, City Fibre, we're a digital infrastructure company. We're building networks across the UK, and it's all really boring. Um, in essence, you know, we all need digital. We need full fibre. We all get that in this room. I think what I'm interested in is... And, and part of my role and my journey is to get areas that we're investing in thinking about the future. What does the future look like? How do we get to the future? Um, so I just want to talk about, and I've, I've said Sheffield, it could be Chesterfield, it could be South Yorkshire, it could be Barnsley, it could be anywhere. So what, you know, what do we look like in 10 to 20 years time? And then what does that journey start to look like? How do we, how do we start to get there? So Future cities, what do they look like? We can think about some of the trends that are happening now. We've had a pandemic, climate change, sustainability. They're all really big key agendas and key topics. Um, and I think we'd all agree sustainability is going to be very much part of what all of our um, home towns and cities look like in 10 to 20 years. Um, there's going to be a different approach to planning, a much greener approach to planning. Um, as we try to reduce carbon, um, we, you know, we try and become net zero. And also, as we're doing that and thinking about that, that means that planning's got to change its view, its view on mobility and infrastructure. So hopefully, the planning systems will stop putting roads first, and they'll start to think about the mobility of people and not vehicles. Um, because also in the future, the population is going to be denser, it's going to be larger. People are living um, much longer than what they've ever lived before. So there's got to be that consideration of infrastructure. And when we say infrastructure, I certainly don't mean roads and rail. I mean all the infrastructures that we talk about. People will need access to services and employment. So employment, again, has got to be quite close. So I imagine something that's much more tight, denser populations, and if we've got older populations and we've got a bigger population, there's a real need to relook at health, prevention, diagnosis. Um, how many people have got something on their wrist that tells them if the heart rate's up, how many steps they're doing? We've all got them, haven't we? These will just get smarter and smarter. Um, and, you know, they'll be able to really work with more people. Look at the pandemic. How many people have got grandparents that are now able to Skype and use an iPad? We would never have thought they'd do that. People will be wearing these devices. People will be able to understand health choices. It will support better well-being. So digital technologies and advances in science should come together in the future to really support individuals and to support communities to look after themselves, to look after their own well-being. Um, leaving, um, let's face it, I personally experiencing tremendous troubles in appointments, getting appointments for healthcare. I think we're, we're all um, fully aware of that at the moment. So by having better prevention and people looking after themselves, it will free up um, the much needed space for those that you know really need the diagnosis and treatment but within that there's a real need and it's um, something that many people are afraid of the data the privacy the security of data infrastructure security and everything that comes along with sharing data across various different platforms from private sector NHS health tech companies digital companies so there's a real need for a real ecosystem to come together and to start to work in partnership to crack this if we want to achieve where we need to get to, to be able to allow people to be healthier um, across the board. Mobility, and when we say mobility, that's moving around, not just vehicles. There's probably going to be a, a less of a need to travel because we all work differently now. The pandemic's done that to us and businesses are more accepting of working remotely, working differently, working in the, in the cloud. Um, and with the new neighbourhoods we start to think they'll be better connected so the choice might be scooters, cycles or legs. Perhaps we might, you know, we might revert back. 
And there's some interesting statistics that it's expected by 2030 that 32% of all new car sales will be electric vehicles. So then there's going to be a need for electric vehicles and the charging points and everything that comes along with electric vehicles, downloading software. You know, the, the list is endless of the needs that all of the future is going to bring. Um, and there's another more interesting stat. By 2040, it's expected that 80% of the journeys we make in vehicles will be shared and in auto autonomous vehicles. Wow, how do we get that in Sheffield? How, how do we start that journey? And think about Uber. We all probably use Uber and it's really snazzy on an app. It's expected that in the future that transport is going to become more like a service, like Uber. And also, we talk about autonomous vehicles, we talk about flying vehicles. Is this where the future's going? If it is, how do we get there? You know, this, this is like a, just a thought-provoking kind of five minutes to, to, you know, to get us thinking about things. Buildings in city centres, they're all old. We need to look at that. How do we use technology to manage buildings, switch off the lights, be more efficient? Um, alert the, you know, the owners to what's happening in that building, shut things down. Sustainable buildings, how do we build sustainable buildings? The list is endless. City infrastructure, you know, how do we make better decisions using data? Surveillance, security, it goes on and on and on. Um, I think some of the how um, are listed up there. There's a lot to do around data and security. There's a lot to do. Uh, you know, with that. There's an awful lot to do around education and the system, giving young people a view into the future. In all honesty, we don't know, we don't know what the future look like, looks like, but we can start to think about that and envision it just from what we know today and, and where the trends are going. I'm going to stop there because I've gone over by two minutes. I'm quite passionate on this subject. Some of the lists there, the list is endless. You, you all get it. Um, and for me, the plea is, I want to start some of the conversations about the future, about the innovation that Sheffield has got at its fingertips. So thank you.